Hello and welcome back. Today it's final time to carry the setup to its room. Uh, this is small change in order. I was planning to do this stuff as the last episode, but my dad was visiting us, wanted to help with the carrying stuff around, and also I had a buyer for my old setup, so I decided I'm going to do this thing now, then assemble it in place and do all the rest of the small things there. And there are still many small and important things like setting up the displays, putting the center mount joystick in place and stuff like that. So this episode is mostly about the small stuff and then the last episode will be about the designing the first swappable module and building a star citizen specific stuff for it. Let's get started. First we had to disassemble the old setup and then start carrying stuff to the empty room. This wasn't that heavy, it was just difficult to carry alone. And then assembling everything. It was actually Father's Day and my father was helping me. And also my five-year-old son was occasionally, well, helping us here. So all in all, we have uh, three generations working with the setup at times. Uh, I guess I need some handlebars here so I can pull myself in. But after setting everything up here and noticing that in previous videos I had the time lapse on one minute interval instead of one second. I also noticed noticed some one issue. This display, the dashboard display is about five centimeters too high. It's kind of challenging here to get the, all the dimensions correct since I didn't have the chair with me so I just tried to add something at suitable high and see it. See how it would work and this time it didn't work but Again, that's something that I have to accept here and I'll just need to grab, grab a hand saw and take something like 5 centimeters off from here just to get it, get it to the right height. So after disassembling the top, I decided that I was going to just take my time and be careful and use a hand saw. Yeah, right. But it ended up being much better this way. And after that it was time to start working with the display mounts. First just adding some extra support below and then the really difficult thing. Basically I wanted to replace the original stand with the 21mm steel rod. So first I had to cut it in length and then I started experiment experimenting with welding. The issue here was that I had basically almost zero experience with welding. But I had this MIG welder and some flux core wires so I started just welding few supports and welding this steel rod into the metal plate. And I also had misplaced my welding gloves and afterwards realized that I should not do this inside so don't do what I do, do what I say. The end result was extremely ugly but for this purpose it was enough. I attached the support I created to the cockpit with few screws and also I attached it to the ceiling so it wouldn't be able to lean forward and that's why I also can trust my welds because there won't be too much stress on them. After everything was in place it was time to start attaching the displays. Still using my original triple display mount here but I was finally able to get rid of the wire wires hanging from the ceiling for the extra support. And at this point it really started feeling that everything was coming together quite nicely. Next it's time for joystick mountings and the idea here is that these will stick out from the inside. I have plenty of these places so I can choose where I want to mount the joystick and I have the holes in this L bracket so I can just put it in make it higher or lower and choose the right position. And while I'm planning to make a central mount for my right hand joystick, I am still going to add this one to the right side so I can, for example, mount the road joystick from my right hand if I want to or add something else there. And this only has three of these simply because, well, to be honest, I didn't have any suitable, suitable steel, steel at hand when I was building this one, so I decided that three is enough for the right side. So next I will just have to make the inside holes a bit bigger from the inside but that's that's okay because 
there's actually double double thick wall, two pieces of plywood in in these locations. And then I'm just going to use these small holes that I have here and screw this in place while the bolts are sticking out. And then I can just use wing nuts to mount the mount the joysticks in the right places. Both joysticks are in place, so I guess this could be called something like minimum viable product. It's it's playable now. If I would like to, for example, learn the keybinds for landing gear and stuff like that, which I don't really want to do. So the work continues. Next, there will be kind of lots of small things here and there, like attaching the side cabinets to the base plates so that I can also remove them easily. And just using a L bracket here and some threads. Then I also decided to add an extra shelf here just for kind of all the USB hubs and everything I have behind here and adding a LED strip underneath and some locks to keep the chair in place. After those few small things I'm back at my basement and next it's time to mount the verbal control panels. There's one, one small thing. I don't want them to sticking out this much from the cockpit so Instead, I'm going to flush mount them with this panel that's detachable and I can in the future change it into something else if I want to. And for that, I actually designed the 3D model and printed a flush mount trim for the control panel. And the model is actually available for download, links in the description if you want to do it yourself. So first thing, I need to cut a hole into the panel. Just making sure it's a few millimeters bigger than the Verbal control panel so it won't be a tight fit, but not too wide since the flush down trim it's it's not too wide. Then I'm going to unscrew the front panel bolts, put the put the flush mount trim in place and use these bolts to add it back into place. Then it's just a matter of attaching it to the grey panel here and attaching the panel in its place. And then I have this nice, beautiful, flush-mounted verbal control panel in part of my cockpit. I'm also going to need a place for my keyboard and mouse, but luckily I have actually two of these and two arms. This is kind of leftovers from my previous cockpit and other projects I ha I've had. And I did have my keyboard with this in my previous cockpit, but now I'm going to add the keyboard to the left side and mouse to the right side. But these are going to need some, let's say, slight modifications to work. Next up, center mounting place for the joystick. And the reason I'm going with this is basically twofold. One is that the Hornet has a center mounted joystick and if I'm going to play that in DCS, I kind of want it myself. But the second thing is that I managed to get some shoulder pain, mostly because I used mouse on the far right in really low position, it was for video editing, it was bad, bad position, but at the same time I noticed that this, for the joystick, for the right hand joystick, the central position is actually a bit more ergonomic. Naturally, a seat with a groove would be better, or something like floor mounted joystick base with the curved, curved, curved extension, but again, I would need to buy completely new joystick base for that one, and something that I that's not something I'm going to do for now. So I happen to have this 90 by 90 millimeter wood here that I cut suitable pieces out, just cut some holes for mounting and made some grooves just to install wiring. And just cutting some angles to make it look a bit nicer. After everything was assembled, just quick sanding and then painting with the gray paint that I'd used with the rest of my cockpit. And some other details like the mounting threads and some extra support. And while I was in the basement, I also started working with the throttle mounting. This is basically just a, a box where the throttle is mounted flush and it sits on the groove that I have on my left side of the cockpit. So I just had to cut a really precise cut to the top, then paint the top grey and attach it in place with these black screws that I like to use. So this is how the hoses 
to how this transformation basically works. I take the joystick off, then slide the turtle forward just a bit, and then attach the rest of the pieces behind the turtle so the surface will still be clean and nice looking. Next, it was just a matter of attaching the center stand in its place and then attaching the right hand joystick that I'm using the Constellation Alpha to on top of that. I didn't measure anything but I kind of expected this when I started seeing the joysticks in place. They would collide to each other when I would pull the right hand joystick left and the left hand joystick to right. So I headed back to my workshop and started working with the stimulator box that I had for throttle. My first idea was to use the spare part that I had from the left hand side stuff, but that really didn't work well. So I just started creating a new box like I did with the throttle. And the first iteration I really wasn't satisfied with the tolerances. So I tried it again, this time with the jigsaw and wasn't happy with that either, but third time was the charm. Then again assembling it and adding the patent cover in place, and once everything was ready, it was time to drop the left hand joystick in its right place, and I have to say in this case, I was actually quite, quite glad that I had to build this, because this looks so much better. And after these big things were ready, it was time to start working with the details again few simple things like adding a cable pass through to the copy and handle so I can pull myself in. The cup holder offered a bit bigger challenge because I had used too small plate to cut the hole, so I needed to make it a bigger and that's why I had to use kind of this template to make the hole bigger and then I was able to push the cup holder back in place. Then a completely unnecessary addition, I'm just using a micro switch that turns the light off when I push the chair back in. But there's actually a nice catch that I realized afterwards. The light actually tells me if I have forgotten the PSU that powers the lighting on. For mounting the stream deck I actually had printed this panel from white PLA, painted it black and engraved some markings in it. If you're interested in how I designed these panels, I have much more details in my previous episode. Basically, there was some soldering, then attaching the stream deck in its place, and finally attaching everything in its final place. And since I had some empty space, I just couldn't resist adding this kind of extra complete use panel next to it. And also this placeholder panel on the right side. And another complete user feature, these aluminum plates. I started by changing a dull plate to my saw so I could use it to cut this thing in two pieces. And as you can see, I also found my welding gloves. Then just cut it in the right size and some sanding just to make sure that I won't have any scratches on my feet. And again, something that looks really nice and just happy I took my time to add this detail to the cockpit. And again, few extra small details. On the left side I printed the stand to hold my Razer Tartarus V2 that I can easily take away from there and use it for example on my knee. And to the right side I printed this holder for my trackball that I used to control the external computer that I used for stuff like OBS or Discord. At some point I managed to break the frame that I had on top of my dashboard display so I made a new one from this really thin sheet, and again, this actually looks much better than the old one. And then the last dreaded part, cable management. If you don't hear anything from me for a couple of days after this video, send help, 
someone with the wire cutter or machete to cut me free from all this stuff. But I'm going to use these stickers to label everything, so hopefully, well, it's going to be a mess, but hopefully it's not going to be a complete mess. And I also bought this USB microphone because, well, all the big boys have one. Well, it was, it's not good. It's something like 100 euro microphone that I paid 35 euros. So I thought that I'm going to give it a try. I'm not expecting too much, but I'm doing this voiceover with the microphone. So I think it's adequate. So after spending much more hours in this phase than I was originally planning or expecting, I am finally done. The setup, it's, it's, it's not yet ready completely. There's one thing to do before I can call it basically cockpit 3.0 3 that I've been calling it before. But for now, I would say it's flight ready. It's playable and it's really fun. I'll have to have to admit that. I'll, it'll take some time getting used to the center mounted joystick, but otherwise it is just amazing experience to play Star Citizen with the setup. But there's still one more episode left in this series and that will be creating the Star Citizen specific panel here. So stay tuned, don't forget to subscribe if you haven't and thanks for watching and see you next time.